Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at Malaysian L2A2 7.62x51mm ammunition. This is generally referred to as 7.62x51 NATO, uh, which it basically is, except it's important to remember, or it's relevant to remember, that Malaysia is not a NATO member state, uh, and this ammunition has not actually passed NATO-specific trials. That doesn't mean it's better or worse, it just means it doesn't have that actual NATO-approved stamp on the head stamp. So uh, what we have here is a product of the one Malaysian arms or uh, ammunition factory. It's called SMEO, which stands for, with some translation, Saritat Malaysia Explosives Limited, which I believe actually translates into Malaysia Explosives Company Limited. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but there's only one ammunition factory in Malaysia. So uh, the company, the factory was set up in 1969 as a joint venture between the Malaysian government, a couple of uh, local private Malaysian firms, uh, and then also uh, Ehrlichen out of Switzerland and Dynamit Nobel out of Germany. So there was some, some very substantial expertise that went into the, the, the setup of this factory. Uh, it appears to be generally good quality ammunition. We'll of course be taking a closer look at that. Uh, I believe it is uh, called L2A2 uh, after the British standard uh, of ammunition. The British adopted their first version of 762 NATO as the L2A1 in 1954, and then they pretty quickly modified it to L2A2 by increasing the, the strength of the case head, the web inside the case head, uh, in 1955. So Malaysia has long maintained strong ties to the United Kingdom in a variety of ways, both to their benefit and to the United Kingdom's benefit. And I believe that when they went ahead and started up this factory, they simply used British specification for the ammo because they had that relationship. Uh, this is only one of many calibers that this factory makes, also makes 5.56, NATO, uh, 9mm Parabellum, 12.7 Browning, as well as uh, larger cartridges, 25mm, and I believe even some stuff bigger than that. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take this out to the range and see how it shoots. The rifle is an Israeli Mauser converted to 7.62 NATO, and uh, chronograph is running. Here we go. Two seven zero seven. Seven one two two six seven seven two six nine eight two seven one one five more rounds. Seven zero two two seven zero four two seven two six two six seven four. Seven zero two, and our last five rounds. Two six six seven. Two six seven eight. Two seven one eight. Seven two one two seven two seven. That is fifteen rounds, no evidence of any hang fires or other anomalies noticed. All right, let's go ahead and open up this nice fresh can of it. Um, all our markings are in English here, which is nice and convenient. Uh, this came in two different ways. They packaged it in 30 caliber ammo cans, like this one, with 300 rounds in each. They also packaged it in 50 caliber ammunition cans with 540 rounds. Basic description there. Our lot number, head stamp on this is MAL, 
presumably Malaysia, uh, and then a date. So this is December 1981. The can itself is sealed with this little lead seal. So let's see if we can just twist that up and pop it off. There we go. Come on. This requires a bit more leverage. Whoo, that was sticky. Inside the ammo is packaged in interestingly both 40 and 20 round boxes. They've got a piece of string here so that we can easily get the first one out. Uh, and they've done this neat thing where they've, you know, you mix 40s and 20s in order to get the maximum number of cartridges into the can. So there's our 20 round, there's our 40 round, there's going to be a bunch of each. In total we have seven 40 round boxes for 280 and then a single 20 round box to give us a grand total of 300 rounds. Plain brown cardboard here with some sealing tape on it. This has all the same information as on the outside of the can, uh, including uh, lot number and production date. These dates at least match that on the outside of the can. Go ahead and pop that tape off. Inside we have rows of eight cartridges with little slips of paper in between them. The ammunition is a little bit tarnished looking. What I saw of the 50 caliber cans is that those were in a little bit better condition uh, internally. We've got our head stamp here which is MAL 7.62 and then the same uh, month and year date code as on the outside packaging. So you can see here we've got 1281 and the same on these others. There's the next row. Same stuff. A little bit of basic data. This is non-corrosive. It is Berdan primed, so not easily reloadable. The bullets are a little bit of basic data here. Uh, these do have a sealant at a uh, little bit of basic data here. These do have a, a purple colored primer sealant. Uh, they do also have some sealant uh, on the bullet, although uh, you don't really see it above the case neck, but you'll see it on the individual pulled bullets. The primers are non-corrosive and Berdan, so this is not easily reloaded. Bullets are a fairly typical uh, open base, full metal jacket, uh, boat tail design. You can see the primer sealant, or the bullet sealant, the case neck sealant here. These bullets do also pull a magnet, so this is a bimetal jacket, if that's relevant uh, to the shooting range where you might use them. And the powder is of the ball variety. I pulled and weighed 10 bullets, uh, came to an average weight of 146.2 grains, standard deviation of 0.41 grains, and a maximum spread of 1.5 grains. That's pretty good. As for velocity, our 15 rounds averaged 2702 feet per second, with a standard deviation of 19.37, and a maximum spread of 53 feet per second. That's not extraordinary, but it's not bad. The, uh, the specification, the requirement for American M80 ball is to have a maximum standard deviation of 32, uh, which this easily comes in below. I will also point out, while it didn't show up on this particular video, uh, this ammunition does have slightly hard primers, um, obviously within spec for the Mauser to successfully detonate, um, but I have had other firearms that I've used this in that had occasional light strikes. Uh, relative to other ammunition. So this is on the hard end of a NATO spec primer. So our average velocity was 2702 feet per second. The specification for American M80 ball is that it needs to be 2750 uh, at 78 feet from the muzzle, and that's plus or minus 30 feet per second. Interestingly, however, the British specification for L2A2 is 2700 feet per second. Uh, plus or minus 30. Again, a bit farther from the muzzle than what I was shooting. However, uh, by British specification, which is what this appears to be based on, uh, this ammunition fits exactly right into the very middle of the specification. So that's pretty cool. Uh, 
overall seems to be pretty good ammunition. Uh, this came into the United States uh, back around 2000, and then a bunch of it has come into the United States right now, so there's quite a lot on the market. Uh, if you decide that you're looking for some ammunition to use, hopefully you found this valuable. Thanks for watching.